And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. Panda Patrol, as you know, we've never done an origin story here at Dakota Ring Theater, but by popular request, we're going to jump back in time for a single episode to bring you the very first meeting between the Red Panda and Kit Baxter, who later became the fearless fighting female known as the Flying Squirrel. So please enjoy, with our compliments, this episode, Secret Origins. I'm terribly sorry, sir, to keep you waiting. Not at all, Mr. Henderson. I know how busy a bank president must be. I'm just delighted you found time. (laughs) Sir, you flatter me. Uh, Please, sit down. As one of the city's wealthiest young men, you are one of the bank's most important clients. And as your father was a good friend of mine for many years... Oh, dear, this sounds serious. uh, No, no. (laughs) Well... Well? Forgive me. I'm not entirely certain how active an interest you take in the care and feeding of your empire. Interest might be a strong word for it. I thought as much. Mr. Henderson, is something wrong? I honestly couldn't say. Now I am confused. You're not the only one. I don't know if you're aware of this at all, but there has been some extraordinary activity in the last six or seven months as regards some of your family's assets. As I am the last member of the family, Mr. Henderson... Forgive me. Yes. Your assets. It is difficult at times to remember that you are not the same young boy I watched grow up. For generations, your father and his fathers worked to build your fortune, and I only wish to help you protect that legacy. Oh, yes. This has only recently come to my attention. There has been a very unusual level of activity within your accounts, and it has been going on for some months now. What kind of activity? It is a very tangled web, sir. Large amounts move through various corporate interests into dummy accounts, and from there into a series of seemingly unrelated trusts. Vast amounts of money have been diverted from your personal and business interests into these accounts through an almost Byzantine series of transactions each clearly calculated to lull the casual observer from any suspicion, all in order to create a completely independent and utterly untraceable pool of funds. Well, that's business. No, sir. No, it isn't. I'm astonished that it came to my attention at all. It was very cleverly done. Someone has very deliberately made this happen. Even with your enormous fortune, this is no small sum. I would call it a masterpiece of modern embezzlement, except... Except? With holdings as diversified as those your late father left to you, no one individual should have been able to achieve such a thing. That's one reason your own fortune was virtually unaffected by the collapse of the stock market. The money is simply in too many places. And now it seems to be in one more place. Yes, but why? And look at the payments from these new hidden trusts. Experimental aeronautical firms, laboratory equipment, technological gobbledygook I can't even begin to understand. To say nothing of the racing car engine. A racing car, you say? And more. Enough material to equip a small army. Very small. I beg your pardon? Mr. Henderson, if you could come to the point... The point, sir, is that either you are the victim of one of the most brilliant crimes I have ever encountered... Or the perpetrator of some plot I cannot begin to understand. Who else knows about this? No one. I value your business and your family name far too much to involve a clerk in such a matter. But I must ask you, sir... Mr. Henderson, you have served my family well once again. I have. Thanks to your hard work and diligence, we were able to clear up this misunderstanding at once. We were? Yes. The entire matter was a dreadful misunderstanding. In fact, none of the money in the hidden trust came from any of my accounts. It... Those accounts have nothing to do with me, and they never did. 
Yes. You will give the matter no further thought. Ever. I... I appreciate you taking the time to go over this with me. Not at all, dear boy. Not at all. I'm only sorry to have wasted your time on such a silly misunderstanding. Best to give the matter no further thought. Wait, Scott! What was that? 238 and a 45 by the sound of it. Henderson, your bank is being robbed. Call the police at once. The police? Uh, where are you going? Uh, come back! <laughs> All right. Everybody stay on the floor for two minutes. Remember, the first one out the door gets a hot lunch. Sir! Sir, don't go outside! You heard what he said. Two minutes! I'm sorry. I have another appointment. I have to go. Where is Richard with the car? Can't let those cowards get away. Hey! Taxi! Taxi! Where to, Mac? Follow that car. Somebody's been to too many picture shows. You're a woman. Say, you don't miss a trick, do you, Professor? Follow that car. I can't do that. He must be doing 40 miles an hour. Twenty dollars. Hang on! Watch it. Be careful. Do you want me to be careful or follow that car, Professor? Because I can't do both. Just don't lose them. Who are these guys? Just just some friends of mine. <laughs> For friends, they're trying real hard not to be seen with you. Left. They went left. When I need a navigator, I'll let you know. They're getting too far ahead. Oh, I shouldn't be driving this fast. One more speeding ticket and I'll lose my hack license. Thirty dollars. Plus the original twenty. What? And the money on the meter? Fine, just keep them in sight. Cash up front. What? Any swell can jump in a cab and promise a girl the moon and the stars. You want me to keep this up, I'm gonna need a deposit. Don't you trust me? The dime on the meter I trust you for. The 50 you pass up front. Now. This isn't a game. Darn right it isn't. This is my livelihood you're playing with, Mac. Now pay the lady. Here. Holy smokes, you weren't kidding. They're gone. Where did they go? Don't lay an egg, Professor. They were headed for the open road, and there's one sure way to get there fast. Up this alley! I suppose you know what you're doing. Relax, Professor. Nobody knows these streets like Kip Baxter. Now comes the tricky part. Oh, good. I was waiting for the tricky part. We're sitting pretty, as long as we don't get blindsided by a truck crossing Bloor Street. What? Hold on! <laughs> <laughs> Where did you learn to drive like that? I took a correspondence course. What? Hang on! There they are, right up ahead. You can applaud now if you wish. Don't get too close. What? I break the sound barrier to catch these friends of yours, and now you want me to hide? Just hang back. Drive casual. All right, Mac. I've had just about enough of this. Another ten? You think you can just throw money at me? It's been working so far. If I didn't need both hands to hold the wheel, I'd show you what I think of crazy rich boys. Lucky me. There. They've pulled into that old warehouse. Ride past it half a block and pull over. Yes. Here. By this alley. Fine. Get out. What do I owe you? An apology. Here. Here's the money on the meter and the ten I promised. Money isn't an apology. It's... A good substitute. No, it isn't. That was a joke. It wasn't funny. Look, I really don't know what I did. Just get out of my cab, Professor. Now I get why your friends were trying to get away from you. See you in the funny papers. But... I wish I knew what I said. Didn't mean to. Good grief. Pull yourself together, man. You got here in one piece. Now it's time those gangsters were taught a lesson by the Red Panda. Did you see the look on their faces, Marty? Did you see it? I saw the money. That's what matters. Eh, stuff the money. It's the look in their eyes. That's what did it for me. You don't want the money? I can use your share. Eh, don't get smart. You know I need it as bad as you. Every job we pull gets us in deeper and deeper. Gotta run further, gotta hide from the people that'd sell us out for a nickel. Every time, just deeper in. Not this time, Bill. No more grifting. No more cons. Good honest stick-up. 
clear us out of trouble for good. This kind of scratch we can lay low for a good long while. Lived a good life. The good life. I'll tell you what the good life is. It's what I saw in that bank guard's eyes when I stuck my forty-five in his face. <laughs> and then that teller and all the rest. You know what I saw? I saw respect. You saw fear, Bill. They was afraid of you. With good reason. Been a long time since I saw anything in a man's eyes besides contempt, Marty. Maybe sometimes pity. But they didn't look down on me today. I was the big man in that bank. You were one of them. I know it. You were right there with me. A gun in each hand, like some kind of cowboy in the pictures. You can't tell me it didn't feel good. It felt all right. And you want to walk away from all that? Hide out. Make the money last. For how long, Marty? You live today, son. You gonna go back to just not dying, or do we pull another job? Sure, and get caught. Who's gonna catch us? We get in a fix, we shoot our way out. Give the next guy something to think about. We can be high rollers, Marty. We can have it all. We just gotta go after it. What could go wrong? What was that? Nothing. That's、uh, probably just a rat. Don't get jumpy. Sure, sure, a rat, Marty. Yeah, awful big rat that can turn the lights out. There's still light through the cracks in the walls. Sure, but who turned out the lights? It's probably just a watchman. Probably ain't gonna do us. It took too much to get this money. I ain't giving it up without a fight. You stay here with the dough. You see anybody that ain't me? You feel free to get yourself a little more respect. You hear me, High Roller? Yeah, I hear ya. <laughs> Marty. <laughs> Marty. Marty, who's there? Come on out. Come out. Take what's coming to you. <laughs> ah, you think you're funny? Laugh this off. <laughs> Oh, I'll kill you! I will! No! No! Marty! Marty, something's in here, Marty! No! No! What are you? You're right. You know that, Bill. What's that? Sometimes fear is the next best thing. No, no, keep away! <laughs> Who are you? What are you? I am the spirit of justice, the hand of retribution. I am the man who will make all you cowards pay. Please, no! You have heard my name, heard it whispered in fear. Soon, you and all your kind will know it well. And before you try and feed off the fear of the innocent, you will tremble at the thought of the red panda. <laughs> no. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Extra, read all about it. Mystery man foils bank heist. Robbers nabbed in under an hour. Read all about it. I'll take a paper, Mickey. On the house, Miss Baxter. On the house. Since when are you a house? It's you know, it's gratis. Gratis? I don't know where you learned a word like that, but forget it, or I'll tell your mother on you. Here. Now go pick on someone your own size. <laughs> you believe that, kid? Oh, come on, Baxter. He's just sweet on you.、Uh, you don't think that's a little strange? No,、uh, stranger than a girl with a thing for a ghost. What are you talking about, Sully? They say this red panda was made up to sell papers. It sure seems to work on you. Hey, this guy's the real deal. Says you. Says me. Says the paper. Says the people he saved. Like who? What? You remember last summer when there was a stick-up artist in my neighborhood? I remember that Ma Baxter nearly fainted every time you left the cab stand late. They found him hanging upside down from his ankles from a lamp post. Doesn't mean a thing. With a sign around his neck that said "Courtesy of the Red Panda." <laughs> 
kids. And my cousin Mary Frances, she said the guy took out a whole pack of gangsters that were taking over her neighborhood. And her best friend swears she saw the red panda jumping off a rooftop. Uh, I've heard them all, kid. Twice. And what's more, you've got a dozen more newspaper stories cut out in your locker. How do you know? Everybody knows, kid. Look... Times are hard all over, but that's no reason to get your head in the clouds. That's the best reason there is. Everybody talks about how hard times are. This guy's out there doing something about it. He's helping people that can't help themselves, Sully. Well, he's a hero. He's a lunatic, and he's going to get himself killed. Look, kid, I know being a cab driver isn't exactly danger and daring do, but that's what pays your bills, not a bunch of crazy dreams. You're just my little ray of sunshine, aren't you? You've got cab 22 today. You better look lively. Sure thing. Take care, princess. And cheer up! Excuse me, sir. I wonder if I might have a moment. Of course, Richard. Come in. What's on your mind? Well, sir, it's about yesterday, sir. Yesterday? Well, not just yesterday, sir. I've been your chauffeur these eight months, sir, and I can't help but notice certain things. Strange, because I'm fairly certain that I pay you not to notice certain things. <laughs> well, I... I that, that is... It just seems that oftentimes you're somewhere, and then you're not. And right about the time you're not... Yes? The Red Panda is. I see. It was that business at the bank yesterday that finally did it, sir. You disappeared right after the bank was robbed and made your own way home for no reason. I wasn't aware that I required a reason. I'm sorry, sir. And I don't mean anything by it. It's just... Oh, for heaven's sakes, Richard. I'm sorry, but we've played this scene too many times. We have? You've figured out my dual identity, and while you mean no disrespect by it, surely since I have so much, I wouldn't object to putting a few extra dollars into your pocket to keep you quiet. Oh, sir! Don't! You're a good driver, Richard, and I hate to lose you. But you can only erase the same information from someone's memory so many times before you risk doing damage. This is the fourth time in two months we've had this little talk. And it's the last. But, sir, I have... I took the liberty of implanting a hypnotic suggestion after our last conversation. Once I say the key phrase, you'll remember telling me that, for health reasons... You've decided to move to the country, and would I consider trying to help you find a posting? But, sir, if you could just... Sock puppets. I'll make some calls on your behalf, Richard. I should have something for you in a few days. In the meantime, why don't you take the rest of the week off with pay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Richard? Yes, sir. Sorry to see you go. Excuse me. Uh, are you the dispatcher here? I suppose I am. You need a cab? I was wondering if you had a driver named Kit Baxter. Oh, what's she done? I'm sorry? Look, I I know she's got a mouth on her, but she's a good kid and she needs this job. Uh, You misunderstand me. I don't have a complaint to make. I just wanted to talk to her. Down that hall. See the delicate flower that just flattened the two drivers twice her size for the usual no good reason? Yes. That's our Kit. She leads with her left, but watch out for the right. It's a doozy. Well, keep that in mind. You two comedians stay out of a girl's locker, you hear me? Keep your paws off my things or you'll get worse than that. Yeah, yeah, you better run. Good morning. Huh? Oh, it's you. You box. What? Boxing. You. My father did. You pick things up. And those two gorillas... They were trying to be funny. With some newspaper cuttings? They're mine. Ah, it doesn't matter. What are you here for, Professor? Well, that's right. We were never properly introduced. I'm... I know who you are. You think there's anyone who doesn't? Am I fired? What? Word around the campfire is you own this taxi company. I do? I mean, it's possible. I have no idea. Am I supposed to be impressed by that? I don't... You know, no one else talks to me like this. So? So I think I like it. Oh, no. What? I may just be a taxi driver, but I don't have to put up with any of that fresh stuff. I didn't... I don't... Money can't buy everything, Mr. Moneybag. I'm trying to apologize, and I'm clearly doing it very badly. What? 
It's not something I'm called upon to do very often, and apparently I'm not very good at it. I was short with you yesterday. I offended you. I get caught up in things. It's not an excuse. Is this on the level? Scout's honor. I made you feel bad, and I really do apologize. No tricks? No tricks. No monkey business? What? Uh, no! Well, all right then. Truth be told, it wasn't you I was mad at. It was me. You waved a bunch of money at me, and I jumped through hoops for it. Drove like a maniac. I guess I just got to thinking what would happen to my ma if I had a wreck. Or if I lost my job for driving like that. But it was a fair offer, and you paid up without a squawk. So no hard feelings. Shake? Fair enough. Actually, it was the best piece of driving I've ever seen. That's the other thing that brought me down here. What is? I find myself in need of a driver. My chauffeur has taken another posting. <laughs> a chauffeur? Me? What's so funny? You said yourself nobody knows these streets like you. What is it with you, buddy? You think a lady driver with a heavy foot and a sweet left hook would be a kick? Impress the other gazillionaires? One of the benefits of being a gazillionaire is that you don't have to care if people are impressed or not. I need a driver. You're a good one. Where I come from, people work for a living. Every day of their lives. Nobody hands them anything. They work for everything they've got and live in fear that somebody who's got even less is going to take it all away. And you want me to to wear a uniform and tug my forelock and hold my tongue around folks who don't understand any of that? The forelock tugging is at your discretion. The rest is more or less right, yes. <laughs> you got the wrong girl, buddy. I don't think I do. Look, I don't know how to say this without making you feel like I did yesterday, but it's good, honest, steady work doing something you're good at. Here's my card if you change your mind. Good day, Miss Baxter. See you in the funny papers, Professor. Baxter, you're out of your mind. You know how I feel about eavesdroppers, Sully? Uh, let me guess, you ain't partial to them, sue me. That was your big chance. <laughs> that was? That was Kip Baxter's big chance, was it? Her moment to shine. Driving some spoiled brat around until he gets bored with me? Is that it? It beats hanging around here punching out the McTeer brothers over a bunch of old newspaper clippings. This guy is out there helping people, Sully. Yeah, well, that guy was in here helping you. You think offers like this happen every day? Nobody ever gave me a chance like that, or your old man. So what, he's a fat cat. Not everybody can be rounding up bank robbers in a warehouse on DuPont. Warehouse? DuPont? Sure. Didn't you read that article yet? Uh, I didn't. Where does it... Listen, Kit. If it doesn't work out, you can always come back. I got a job, you got a job. It can't be. Think of your ma. It can't be. What are you talking about? Sully, I gotta go. Hey! Hey, Professor, wait up! Hey! Where did he... Ah, oh, darn it. Did you lose something, Miss Baxter? You... Did I, uh... What? Are you all right? What, uh... Yes? What kind of car do you have? What? Well, it just occurred to me. Well, if I was your driver, what kind of car would I get to drive? What kind of car would you like to drive? I thought you didn't care to impress people. So did I. I, I mean... No, I'm sorry, that was... No, no, it's all... Strictly professional. No monkey business, I mean it. I don't... Ever. All right, then. I may take strange things too seriously sometimes, Miss Baxter. And I won't always explain myself. I just drive the car. And you can call me Kit. And you can call me anything except Professor, Mac, or Buddy. I'll come up with something. Well, Kit Baxter, think you can behave yourself? Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. 
This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 18, Secret Origins, was written and directed by Greg Taylor and featured the vocal talents of Scott Moyle, Stephen Burley, Peter Nickel, Denise Anderson, Andrew Merzetti, Tim Vant, Clarissa de Nederlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night.